All right, welcome back to Blue Collar Homestead. Right now we are gonna do a little bit of a homestead update and then uh, towards uh, you know, the later part of this video, we're gonna stuff some of these tomatoes we grew. They're actually, the breed is actually called a Get Stuffed Tomato. It's from, I think we got it from Baker Creek, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we had them before, but uh, we're gonna try something a little different. So, but in the meantime, take a look at this. This is uh, some of our tomato sauce that's you know, cooking down. We are. This is our, I think, our second batch this year. Yes. So uh, we're gonna be canning that and cooking those tomatoes and all this other stuff at the same time. It's kind of, kind of be organized chaos. But uh, we have had a few projects that we were working on, and I probably should have recorded it, but I was busy and just got into it and kind of went without recording it. Now, uh, now I just want to show you the, the finished product and whatnot, but. Uh, Let's have a look at that. So I don't know if you want to follow me. I, I made a couple different doors I built from scratch. Oh, we're going that way too. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go that way too because I don't think I. Uh, no, you didn't. I don't think I, I posted any of that stuff either. But let's take a look at this. I made some doors for the uh, the linen closet and the closet that the furnace resides in. So come on in here and have a gander at these. Something different, you know, I mean, I wanted it to match the vanity and, uh, you know, I went in the shop and went ahead and rusted all this tin and, uh, Just a reminder, that's what our vanity looks like. Yeah, I built the vanity about four years ago and the trend's been dying to get, like, closet doors on here forever and I've just well, been so okay, busy. Well, okay, 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 but what? having no door, it wasn't even that pretty before. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> it's pretty now and then it was, you know, but yeah, the doors are here and I'm so happy. And then there is a furnace who hasn't seen one of those. Now, it's not gas before anybody starts crying. Yeah, it's, it's, not gas. it's electric, so it's not, it doesn't need to have a louvered door or anything. So like exciting. That. So, yeah, that's just not <laughs> That's just hiding the furnace, is all that's doing. But Okay. So, oh, well, I can't see that room. <laughs> yeah, that's the room the freeze dryers. And that's our basement because we don't have one. So Well, it's. It's a little junked up right now because of our current project. A little project. bit, but you know. But that's because of our current project. Yeah, our current project. You know, it's so freaking hot outside, we can't even run the freeze dryer. It's like, it's been over 100 every day, what well, seems like forever. I don't even like canning right now because I mean, it's so hot. Our air conditioner is having a hard time keeping it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure everybody's having that issue. It's like 110 out and your air just runs all day long. But uh, it's getting so hot, we can't put the solar cover on the pool. The pool is like 92 degrees right now. It's getting to the point where I need an ice maker that just keeps dumping ice into the pool. Because even the pool is too hot. But... Uh, <laughs> Come have a look at the laundry room. Uh, before I walk over there, you can get a shot of this door. I made this door oh, too. Yeah. This door I made from scratch as well. You know, now the Explain the, glass. the frost on the glass, this this was ridiculous. I didn't buy a piece of frosted glass. That glass is a quarter inch thick. And I was going to buy the frost. They sell it in a roll, like at Lowe's, Home Depot and all that. They wanted $35 for a roll of the frosting stuff. So I was like, man, that is freaking crazy. Walmart had it for 12 bucks. And then the uh, the sticker, of course, Trend bought the sticker off of Amazon. But uh, let's, Six bucks. Yeah, let's open the door. And you guys can have a gander what went on in there. Because I built a lot of stuff in there. This and we didn't, room. Was, we didn't do it before a picture. No, Sorry. we didn't. I was just I'll see busy, if we can find something. And I got into it. And everything just kind of went nuts. But I'm going to let Trend walk in front of me while I explain what's going on. And you can see I built this rack to hold... All of our canning jars, this will hold 120 jars, 120 quart jars. Just with what you see, now it'll hold 135 if you take everything off of the top shelf here. The top shelf is bigger, it's just for other stuff that we, uh... but yeah, definitely, you know, I built this the other day and you look over here and you have six inches of wall space here. What are, what are you gonna do with this spot right here? This is all you can do with it. I mean, there, there's no other really use for it. You know, he, so. He did great, he really did. We kind of crammed a lot of stuff into here. I crammed a coat rack in there, I crammed a hat rack in there. And then our, sh our shelf, well, you know, these cabinets too. I mean, I don't know if we ever showed these, but. Tim built these cabinets right yeah. here. Now the thing that's nice with these cabinets, I built these to match my kitchen. There is, this shelf, it has 50 pints of corn on it right now. So these these cabinets are actually 18 inches deep. Your standard one's only 12. So these, are, these sit really far back. Then, of course, the shelf over here. I mean, you can see, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, this was kind of funny. This guy here comes off, and you got, you know, all your valves and stuff for the uh, washer behind there. Your connects, your water yeah, connections. Yeah, all your water stuff. connections and all that good stuff. Now, of course, this is leftover laminate flooring we did a bag, backsplash and a shelf with. Now, here's a hack I'm going to tell you about because this drives me nuts. Washer, washer and dryer. These machines have a tendency to jump around all over the place. I'm sure you've had the same problem. I get really tired of the machines moving. So this shelf, if you'll notice, it's right behind here. These are pushed up back what against the shelf. Here. You can kind of see it right here. Yeah. And then, uh, here you put the camera back over here. I wedge, there's a board down here on the floor in between the wall and the machine. And then there's a board wedged in there too. I don't know if you can see that. There's a chunk of two by four right there. By having that board on each side and having it pushed up against the wall like that, the machines don't jump around as much. So, I mean, I think I put that in there, I don't know, two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really had to mess with the machines. Other than that, though, they're constantly moving around and putting them back, and it's just a pain. I don't like that. I like them to stay where they're supposed to be. So, that's kind of what we did. We made more storage for uh, all of our canned can goods and... Uh, you know, redid the shelf and all that stuff and kind of threw a paint job on here and uh, really crammed 10 pounds of stuff in a one pound bag. <laughs> but let's uh, let's head back in the kitchen and I guess we'll get started on the tomatoes and uh, canning all the, all the sauce so we can fill all these guys up. All right. Trin is browning some locally grown beef in there. Sorry. That's all right. Do your thing. I don't have much cord. So what we're doing here is uh, some of this ground beef is going to be used for something she's making tomorrow, but some of it we're going to make, uh, she's going to make a spaghetti sauce. So the ground beef's over there doing its thing. She's got a pot over here. Well, this is what we're going to stuff the uh, tomatoes with. It's got to go in there, but let's have a look at this. Since this is already going over here, this uh, tomato sauce, she's going to take some of this stick it in that other thing over here and uh, make some sauce and then mix it with the rice and parmesan and all kinds of other good stuff. Oh yeah, take a look at that. This is the get stuffed tomato. Yeah. It's almost like a stuffed pepper, just a tomato. Yeah. And when you when you hog it out, when you cut off the top, it's not as full as a regular tomato. No. So it's almost like cutting open a green pepper, right? Kind of, yeah. So the thing that's weird though, is that this one's really big. Yeah. But what I've noticed in our garden, because it's been so freaking hot and it hasn't rained a whole lot, is a lot of the tomatoes are getting ripe when they're smaller. Yeah. So, and the, the problem is even though we water regularly, it's like we water at night, usually turn on the sprinkler, what about 8.30, let it run till about 10. And what happens is, I think as soon as the, you know the sun comes up and it gets so hot that it just it evaporates quickly and it just the plants aren't getting everything they need. I'm sure everybody across the the area is having this issue, but it is what it is. So all right, you're taking that out. Yeah, I'm gonna. Get that. All right, so this this guy here is gonna go for something else tomorrow. I don't know. What are you making with that, Trent? Um, I'm gonna try. I never made rotel before, so I'm gonna try that. I don't know why I had a taste for it suddenly, but. I do. So. All right. Well, that's cool. Never made it before. I've had it. Just never made it. So. I don't even know what it is. It's just the Velveeta cheese. I know it's not very healthy, but it's Velveeta cheese with the Rotel, like tomatoes and diced green onions and some ground beef. And it's like, a, it's like tor for tortilla chips. Oh, okay. You know, Paige, On the border tortilla chips. I not, figured Paige not, might not, like it. Not the Tostitos ones. Those got way too much salt for me. Yeah, on the border chips are way better. Yeah, those, those ones are pretty good. Oh, this is our homegrown garlic. Yes. That's going in there too. Yes. What's so what are you what are you putting in there? You're gonna put the garlic, put uh some of our tomato uh, sauce going in there, and then. Yeah, um, garlic tomato sauce, and then um, I'm gonna thicken it with this paste. Yeah. And you know. Rice. We actually looked into making paste last year, and it was just a ridiculous amount of tomatoes to get like one tiny little can of paste. Yeah, it's, um... And if you look at the paste, actually from the store, read the label, there's really not a whole lot of anything weird in there. It's super cheap. Yeah, um, so... 
But, you know, we did do uh, freeze-dried tomatoes and made a tomato powder. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, we still have some of that. Even now, the slices were good. They're good on a paste. That could, that could probably work as something to thicken it up with, that, that paste we made. But you'd probably, or it was a uh, powder. You'd probably have to use a lot of it, though. But, uh, all right, Trent's going to get this sauce put together. We're going to get this rice cooked and get everything prepared. And then uh, we'll bring you back when we're putting these things together. And right before we chuck them in the oven and see what they do. All right, you're going to check the water? Yeah, are you recording? Yes, I am recording. I would like to, oopsie. You like to check it to make sure you're... See, I'm over. You're over? I put them, I put them around the same temperature. Oh, yeah, well, the jars don't break. Yeah, yeah I already yeah. lost the jar this year, and I really don't want to again. God, that makes me so mad when the jars break. It's like you lose the jar, and you lose everything inside. Yeah, I have to, um, we have to wait a few minutes. All right, we're going to wait a few minutes, but while we're waiting, but I can, I'm going to take a look at this, because this looks really good. This has to come off right now. Now, everything in here, pretty much, just about everything came out of our backyard. Well, except that the meat was local. Was well Tomatoes we grew, the garlic we grew. We used a small thing of paste. Oh, the tomato paste. Yeah, we did yeah. use tomato paste. Garlic. Garlic. Garlic we grew, though. That was ours. Oh, wait. You had that cracked. Somehow. Something like that. All right. Well, Trin's going to uh, deal with this temperature issue. Um, I'm sort of a can because I took the lid off that so I can... Um... All right. Trin's going to fill up some of these jars and get those ready. That sauce over there is... Doing his thing, just letting it simmer. Now this was, what, 45 pounds of tomatoes we put in here. Now you've seen my videos in the past where we have that, that thing that, uh, it's like a mill that gets all the seeds and the skins and everything out. We sent all of that through the mill, 45 pounds of tomatoes. Now 45, this is an 18 quart roaster. This sucker was filled to the brim, dude. I mean, you can see it cooked down about, oh, about an inch and a half. And it's been running about, what 25 26 hours Trent? it was about Maybe three a little longer longer yeah yeah it's been a minute but uh cook it down to thicken it up a little bit so all right i got this awesome new funnel because the this one is really like long so i'm hoping this jar i, I always when i went to spill it in it always oh, like spilled out yeah the other funnel was narrower but this. the issue with that is that's that's a plastic uh ladle Yes. Because this is like a ceramic coated steel uh, pan or whatever. Yeah. Which I really don't like. I wish this pan was ceramic, but I haven't seen an 18 or 20 quart roaster with a ceramic uh, thing. Usually it's, you know, ceramic coated and rather than have... What is that? Oh, that's the right. water water boiling. <laughs> Our water boiling. Yeah, the solid ceramic uh, pan like the crock pots have is what I'd rather have than this steel thing, but... When you're dealing with tomatoes in this volume, I mean, we need a large roasting pan just to let this stuff simmer. I mean, if you put it out on the stove, I mean, I don't want to tie up the stove all day, let alone have the thing running for, you know, 20 or 30 hours. But so Trent's got that under control. Oh, there you go. I like to stick green. Like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so they asked for one inch headspace, which I don't have enough, so I need to put more in. All right. I really like this funnel. I'm pretty happy with it. All right. I'm using this to take out my air bubbles because it's just easier. I got those from Walmart on clearance or something. All this stuff smells so good. The whole oh, I forgot my rings. The whole house smells like tomatoes right now. Hold on, I'll be right back. I gotta get my rings. All right, go get your rings. rings. I'll keep them entertained while you do that. Yeah, we have a giant box full of rings for all these things in the other room, but uh, what's that? Oh, I covered it with something. Yeah, we've had a lot of different projects going around, as you saw in the beginning of the video. So stuff in our spare bedroom is totally out of whack right now. So, all right, here we go. Here's my rings. An Amazon box full of rings. All right, pick out what you want. There's got to be a couple hundred of them in there. You know, since I built that rack in the, in the laundry room... We'll probably be able to get a better idea of exactly how many mason jars we own. Yeah. Because we never really counted. You know, I mean, when you got them all shoved in a cabinet and everything, like you said, it's hard to keep track of what you have. Yep. With it all on the shelf and all visible there, all of our quart jars, it'll be easier to see. Now, that other shelf with the corn, I know there's about 50 pints on that one shelf. 
The shelf below, we're hoping to fill it with green beans, but uh, we're not having luck growing green beans like everybody else is having trouble this year, too. So we might end up buying green beans from the store, like organic ones, and just canning them so we have them, you know. But well, we'll see. No, nah, I think they get the picture with that, but... Uh, but we'll come back like when we start the... When we start dropping these in and cutting up the, uh, the tomatoes to make dinner with. Yeah. So we'll catch up with you in a minute. Go. All right. We're going to drop this sucker in there. I'm going to drop this in here for trend nice and slow. Hopefully nothing breaks. you got to listen here. Crack. It's like, oh, there's nothing worse than hearing that. All right. All the jars are covered. Might have to add a hair more water, Trent. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, because it's like there's not an, quite enough there. It's I'm afraid it's gonna boil over and or boil out and steam out or whatever. What do you think? It's good. It's good. Yeah. All right, now we say you're gonna let this get to a rolling boil and then time it for forty. Forty minutes because they're quart jars. So yeah, it's and then we'll pull minutes. them out, let them cool off, and hear all the lids go ding 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 ding, 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 ding. Do their thing. You can see the rice cooking here too, so. All right, now that that's in there, I guess we're going to uh, switch gears and get back to making dinner. Yep. So, All right, Trent, what are you going to do here? Cutting the cheese. You're going to cut uh, the cheese? Uh, uh, no, um, I'm going to shred the cheese. I don't like that. Dude, color. this little thing is awesome. What was it? It's like 40 bucks? Uh -oh. Yeah. It's the, I had one of them food processors from Black & Decker or something like that, and the lid... Oh, oh, you had to fight with that thing? I think it was a pain to get the lid off. You had to get tools out just to... Yeah, the lid locked and it wouldn't let you back in. It was crazy. Yeah, it was really bad. But um, anyway, so we got this and it worked pretty good, actually. It goes right on the KitchenAid, so I mean, it was, yeah, like I said, it was like, what, 40 bucks? Yeah. And it's got like, I don't know, three or four different blades. Yeah. You know, I mean, I we actually slid uh, cucumbers through it and it actually sliced them perfect, I think. I, I like them thin. I don't like them real thick. Yeah, for some reason. So, you know, I know you like them eat the cucumber half inch stick. I don't like that. There you go. It does its thing. I mean, that thing works awesome. This is on what? On the first speed? One or two? I think it's, it's be on four, so I don't know where I'm at because I'm on the other side. I think it's on two. Oh. It's on two. There we go. Yeah, it looks like about four. Yeah, but that thing works, works really well. If you have a KitchenAid, I highly recommend getting one of these. You can see the name on the side right there. Like I said, it was like 40 bucks. Came with a couple different blades. But all right, she's going to grind that up, and then we're going to get ready to start putting these things together. All right, so here's what we're doing. Hogging these guys out. This will work better. Like, if you're stuffing peppers or something, I usually just put them in a cupcake tin or whatever to hold them up straight. That way you're not fighting with them, but... Now you can see these are a little more, uh, I don't know what you'd say on the inside, but yeah, you take a spoon and just... Fleshy? I yeah, guess. I guess. But yeah, you just carve some of that out of there. You, obviously, you can't leave it all in there because you need space to put whatever you're stuffing it with. I don't want this one. You don't like that one? I don't like that one. Well, good thing is we got plenty to pick from. Well, we got to make sure we leave some for Paige when she comes home. Well, we're not going to eat all these. Although, I don't know, they're pretty freaking good. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if they want to see it like the inside. It's just. Yeah, it's kind of different than a regular tomato. It's more, uh, I don't want to say solid, but it's not like a Roma where you, you get into it and it's just juicy. And, you know, this is like a, it's almost like the inside of it's more dry than a regular tomato, you know? Yeah. Not as juicy, but. Is there some over there for people? Yeah, there, yeah, there's a few over there. They're kind of on the smaller this one side. I don't, I don't, well. No, we could do these two. I mean, oh, you want, Paige wants to make them when she gets home. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, gonna... this one's got something wrong. This one's no good. Uh, yeah, no good. This one's got a uh, soft All right, spot. All right, so. Oh, we got this these two. This and that one over there we'll just save for Paige. Oh, there's a couple on the window this still. One's... Yeah, but those are green. Are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are green. They're going to take a day or two. We don't have any more outside? No, but there's a pepper too, so she might have the oh, pepper yeah, and that's the right. tomato. So I think we're all right. We'll okay. just. I'll do this one, and then the rest will save for page. All right. Well, we'll get back together when we get everything mixed up and start stuffing. All right. Let her rip. Taste. So that's about the consistency of the spaghetti sauce mixed with the rice. 
And let's push that down in there real good so it gets in all the voids and stuff. More? Oh, yeah. Load that sucker I up, man, so it's like heaving over, oh, like a okay. heaping mound. I don't make stuffed green peppers for myself, so. Well, you don't like green peppers and you guys, you got that acid reflux thing, but for this, these tomatoes are really good, so. The sauce is really good. Yeah. I would put another spoonful right on top right, of that right, one. Right. You got to have like a. Keep your. There you go. That's going to like. If that comes out on my floor, guess who's cleaning it up? The dog. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's who's going to clean it up, the dog. <laughs> yeah, that looks really good, though. Poke in the hole. Yeah, you got to kind of stuff it in there to make sure it gets in all the voids and stuff and whatnot. But I'm a huge fan of, of stuffed green peppers. But Is that good, sir? That's, that, will, that will suffice. <laughs> Does that make you happy? <laughs> Keep it up, woman. See where that gets you. Uh -huh. All right, so. Saw. Saw. I don't think they know where that is. We're going to stuff all these guys, and then we're going to shove a bunch of Parmesan all over the tops of them, because Parmesan is pretty good, too. Yes. We don't grow the Parmesan, though. we got to buy that from the store, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't have a <clears throat> cheese press or a cheese wheel or... Yeah, that's not, making cheese isn't our thing. Now we did freeze dry a bunch of a bunch of goat's milk. I'm saving that though. Yeah, we're kind of hanging on to that now, and uh, the girls are pretty much done. You know, providing milk for now. We're well, yeah, in case we breed because we might start in September. We we're on, we're unclear what we're gonna do with that. So maybe maybe you guys could tell us. I mean, we cannot sell goats around here right now for the life of me. I think it's because hay costs are way up. And nobody wants to buy because they don't want to pay the money to feed. And I get it, fine. But on the other hand, it's like, is that good? We, yeah, that'll work. We need to breed them to get milk out of them. But what do I do with these extra goats? I mean, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I really don't want to eat them. But I will if I have to, you know. Keep them busy. Okay. Uh oh. Where, where'd you go? I have to. I have to see if this is a rolling boil so I can start my streamer. Yeah. Oh, you're at a rolling boil. That is at a rolling boil. It's time to start the timer for 40 minutes. It's probably a little been rolling boiling for a little over, but that's okay. So yeah, that's our biggest dilemma in the goat world is we don't know if we should breed next year or not because we couldn't even sell the goats we have that we the babies we got. We one got of them we had to give away. Yeah, one of the bucks we ended up giving away because we could not sell it. And he was pulled. Yeah, and he was pulled too, so which was kind of odd. We couldn't even sell a pulled buck, so that was kind of strange. But uh, the two does, we didn't even attempt to sell them because I mean, just the marketplace is loaded with goats for sale. It still is, actually. You know what, though? It's not just goats. It's literally. Oh, it is everything. I see cows, pigs, all kinds all of stuff. All livestock. It's yeah. crazy, and I don't think anyone's moving anything. Well, see, the thing that gets me, though, is. Um, a friend of ours has a bunch of goats too, and he said next year he's not breeding anything because he cannot he cannot uh, sell the ones he has. So if everybody's taking this approach where they're not going to breed their goats, I'm gonna eat some are we going to be the only ones who brought our goats and have the only goats available? Or are we going to have more goats we're going to get stuck with? I don't know what's going to happen, but... All right, Trent just chucked all that stuff in the oven on 350. That's going to sit in there for how long? About 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay, 15 minutes. <laughs> so we're, the cheese is golden bubbly. All right, so we'll bring you back when that happens, and then uh, we'll throw these suckers on a plate and see how they taste. All right, here we go. It is done. Do you need me to hold that for you? Oh, wow. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, that does look really, really good. You're getting the big one. I get the big one? You're getting the big one. Okay. <laughs> all right, little woman, I'll let you... Uh, Oh, well, you can leave that there. I want you to make your plate, and I'll, I'll make mine. Well, I'm gonna, well, I want to record what you think about, you know, cutting into this sucker and giving it a whirl. I'm trying to think of which one I want. I'm going to go with this guy. Okay. Oh. Hey, you know what? Uh, oh, 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 okay. You're going to have more than one. Thank you. <laughs> what? What do you mean, thank you? <laughs> You're crazy. Uh, it filled up with liquid in there, like all the liquid came out. Yeah, but you know what? This sauce turned out really good. Yeah, the sauce did turn out really good. These tomatoes are really good. All right, I'm going to put that there. All right, uh, grab yourself. Oh, you might want to grab uh, grab a steak knife. I do realize that, like, I can't put hot stuff like this in my mouth. 
I realize that, but oh, here, let me get you a, hold on a second, a napkin. There you go, darling. You're welcome. Oh, you see Camo's over there? Sitting in the air conditioner. Oh. Hey, Camo, no licking your paw, dude. No licking. Yeah. Crazy dog. Hey. Freak. All right. All right. I'm going to cut this open so it'll pull off. All right. Let's see what you got there, little woman. Oh, I was trying to avoid that. OMG. Ooh, look at all that. You see that? The skin like came off. Yeah, but you know what? It's just these tomatoes really good. I'm going to have to go peel the lid off of that canner there. Nope. You leave it. Just because it's, turn, it's um, kind of bubbling over a little yeah, bit. Turn it down a little. Yeah, well, I'm just going to grab the lid and crack it so it's... It no, it wasn't. It, it worked its way back on, but... All right, Trent, what do you think? I don't know. i got to wait until it cools off. I like to keep my taste buds. Oh, you don't want to burn them off? Hot, right? Mm-hmm. That's really good. Is it? Yes. I would imagine. I mostly, I don't taste the sauce that we made as much because the tomato jumps out at you. It's so good though. It's really good. I think you're going to like it. I know I'm going to like it. We made something similar, but we used uh, elbow noodles last time we tried this because we didn't have any rice and we were too lazy to go to the store. It was one of those days where it was like, what do we have? Yeah. So... All right, well, I'm going to grab one of these things, and I'm going to go to town and eat on it, too. And then uh, we'll bring you back when we pull those jars out, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap this thing up. So we'll be back shortly. Okay. All right, here we go. These things are done. We are going to lift these out of here. Kind of slowly. All right, now. Really, dude? Really. Every time. Every time. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take these out of here very carefully. Set these guys over here. And I don't know, you'll start hearing them pop over the next probably half hour or so, hour, whatever, but uh, this is pretty much gonna be it for this video this time, but uh, like, subscribe, and share, and be sure to join us next week. This video will be out tomorrow, today's Saturday. This will be out tomorrow, which is Sunday. Be sure to join us a week from now I'm going to put out a different video of something I have never attempted before, but uh, it's going to be a backyard diet challenge. Basically what I'm going to do is I am only going to eat what comes out of my backyard for a week. And I'm going to keep track and see actually what kind of weight I lose and exactly how much I eat. So it'll be interesting. I mean, it's definitely possible. We have chickens, eggs in the garden. so. Shouldn't be that bad, so be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Follow us to join. Or, uh, I'm totally screwing that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be sure to watch next week's video, too. And then uh, I think that's going to be about it. So remember to uh, live with the land and not on it. And we'll catch you next time.